starting from your home screen, you're going to find your Procreate icon and tap on that. That opens you up to the main interface of Procreate. Hit the plus sign to create a new canvas. We're going to start with the screen size. I like to two, use two fingers to uh, adjust. I, I pinch my fingers down to adjust the canvas size down a little bit so I can just see the space around uh, my canvas. So I'm going to choose a color here. I'm just choosing black. You can find black by double tapping at the bottom of the color chooser, color picker. So I'm going into my brush library and I'm going to go under the sketching brushes and I'm going to choose the Procreate pencil. So I'm checking the brush size here using the slider bar and just kind of double checking what that looks like on my screen. Opacity is going to be all the way up. Now the brush size looks like all the way up as well. So I'm just going to start sketching out um, the general shape of a monstera leaf. That's what we're going to be drawing here. A monstera is a um, house plant if you uh, weren't aware. So I'm using uh, two fingers to tap and undo some of the pencil strokes that I've made. I uh, wasn't happy with them and I want to change the orientation of my canvas. So you see there I used two fingers to pinch in the canvas and then I turned and rotated. So now with the canvas situated in a vertical format, I'm going back in and using my pencil to sketch out this basic, um, it's basically a heart shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is our sketch. Uh, we'll, we'll, once we get our sketch set up, we'll do another layer with our line work over that. So kind of shaped like a strawberry or um, kind of a, almost a heart. So now I'm going to pick my eraser tool and use that to erase in some breaks in the line that I've drawn for the outside of the leaf. Uh, monstera leaf has um, a very distinct shape to it and so that's what we're creating here by erasing some of these sections in the line. And don't worry about it being perfect, um, you just want to do a few gaps down the side of the plant or the leaf. Okay, going back to my pencil or my paintbrush. And so now I'm just going to draw in some open sections on the leaf. You don't want them to go uh, past your halfway point. It's the only kind of real rule here. And then coming down and doing the same thing on the other side. So if you make a mistake, just switch over to your eraser and you can erase whatever you don't want there and then switch back to your pen tool and keep on going.
And so now I'm just drawing some little holes inside the leaf, um, the little fronds. It's one of the characteristics of this kind of uh, plant. All right, so now I'm gonna go into my layers panel and I'm going to add a layer and then switch over into my brush library and I'm going to choose a different brush. I'm gonna go into the inking section and I'm going to choose the studio pen. Now I'm checking the size of the brush. Have it at about, oh, nine, 10% there. Double check the size, I like that. Making sure that I am on the correct layer, which is up above layer one. And now I'm going to go back into layer one. I'm going to hit the tap the little in on the side there and it brings down another menu. I'm going to lower the opacity of that layer. And it looks like I got a little mark on layer two somewhere. So let me figure out where that is. You can see it by the little thumbnail. It has a black line across it. So I'm just looking to see if I can spot where it is. And there you go. I'll take that off. And I want to make sure I'm going on the right layer and yes I'm on layer two and there's no little line across my thumbnail and so I'm going to take my brush and on layer two I'm just going to trace over the lines that I already sketched out. I want to keep my lines as smooth as possible but if um, you have any issues with it don't worry we're going to go back in and clean it up once we get done with this part. All I'm doing is tracing over what I already sketched out. Tapping over onto my eraser tool to clean that up a little bit and bring that down a little more sharply. Back on my pen tool. Now for the inside sections. Let me clean this up first. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go into my layers panel and I'm going to tap the check mark there on the right side of layer one and just turn off visibility on that. And there, doesn't that look nice? So I'm gonna use my two fingers and um, pull them apart on the screen in order to go in and clean up any um, messes or any rough spots. So I'm in the brush library for my eraser tool and I'm putting it on the inking section and picking that same studio pen. Adjust the size a little bit and then I'm gonna start cleaning up some of these sections that aren't as smooth as they could be. I'm switching back and forth between my, my paintbrush or my pen and my eraser tool. One of the important things here when you're doing this cleanup work is you want to make sure that the entire outline is closed because we're going to drop color into this later. And if there's any kind of gap like you see right here, um, the color will flood out over the entire screen. So you want to make sure that the entire outline is uh, connected. 
And you can have these little holes on the inside, that's fine, but the, the outside part of the leaf, uh, that whole line needs to connect. And I'm just using my fingers to pinch and pull in order to zoom in and out. It just helps me work my way around the screen and then to zoom in to um, see where the line is, is uneven or rough and be able to clean it up nicely. Making sure that everything's connected in. So once you have everything all cleaned up and all of your um, gaps closed up, you're going to go back into your layer panel. Now we're going to change the color of the background. So you saw I tapped on the background layer and now I'm taking the outside reticule and changing it to like kind of a red color. And the inside reticule, I'm making it just an off white. So that changed the background color. Now I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to go back into my color picker and I'm going to change my outside reticule to a green and the inside reticule to kind of a desaturated uh, metal green. Oops, I put a mark on my canvas somehow, so I'm just going to tap with two fingers to undo that. And then I'm going to select layer two and I'm going to tap on the left side and it brings up this extra menu. I'm going to go down and select reference. Then I'm going to go back and select layer three and having the reference layer below uses the uh, line drawing almost like a coloring book image. And so I can just pick up um, my uh, color and I'm going to pick up my color green and I'm going to drag and drop it into that shape and because it's referencing the layer below it, it only fills in that area. Now if yours filled up the whole page, then check to see if you have any gaps in your line drawing. So now I'm going back in and I added a layer here and going back into my color picker and I'm moving the color to like a greenish yellow. I'm going to go into my brush library and I'm going to go into the artistic brushes and I'm going to pick the hearts brush. So tap out of that onto my screen and I'm going to lower the opacity down to around 50% and double check my size. I have it at about 25%. And so now I'm going to go back into my layers panel and I'm going to turn off the reference layer. So I'm clicking, tapping on the left side. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with layer three, but this time I'm going to turn on alpha lock. And what alpha lock does is it prevents anything, um, any of the marks that I make showing up anywhere where I don't already have ink down. So you can see I'm not being careful here at all. I'm just brushing over the top of my leaf with this yellowy green color that I have. Now I'm going to go back into my color picker and I'm going to choose a darker green. 
bring that reticule down to the darker area and again I'm not being careful I'm just brushing that right over my leaf and you can see it only shows up on the green areas it doesn't show up anywhere else where there's not already um, something on the that layer so now I'm looking at the colors that I've already used, the history there on my color picker, and I picked that yellowy green that I had been using. I'm going back in and adding a little bit more light, uh, of the light yellow green in there, just to give it a little extra dimension and texture. Now once you're happy with that, then you're gonna go up into the layers panel again. And I'm just gonna delete this layer four. We ended up not needing it. So just get it out of the way. And now I'm gonna go over into my wrench tool and select add and add text. Now that brings up the text interface and a text box. So down here in the left corner, if I tap the little letters there, this brings up my um, all of my text tools. So right now I'm scrolling through all of the fonts that I have and I'm just going to select one. I'm gonna select this Helvetica new and I'm gonna change the size. And then I'm just checking, is it aligned um, the way that I want it? Then I'm gonna tap in the left top corner of, the, of that and bring up my keyboard. And then I'm gonna type in National Houseplant Day. And I'm gonna play around with the sizing of this a little bit. Um, Maybe put them, put it on different lines and see how that looks. Yeah, I think I like that better. So now I get rid of the keyboard in that bottom right corner there. It, it makes the keyboard go away. And I tapped on my move tool and I have it set on uniform down on the interface below. And then I can um, move the uh, text box around um, as to position as I like it. Now I've just switched it to free form and that allows me to um, stretch it out without changing the um, height. And so I'm just kind of playing with that a little bit, trying to get it sized the way I like. And now I'm going to go into the layers panel and I'm going to tap on that text layer on the left side and bring up my drop down menu and I'm going to select edit text and then go in here and I'm going to change the kerning under the design section. And what that does is it just stretches out the space between the letters with kerning and the tracking. Tracking makes it so that the whole word is wide. Um, and so just adjusting those two levels so that I have it exactly how I like. Now I wanna go in and um, move the leaf down a little bit. So I'm gonna select layer three, and then I'm also going to slide layer two over to the right. And that highlights both of them in blue, meaning that they're both selected at the same time. Now I'm using my move tool to um, make the leaf smaller, but I have it still on freeform. I'm gonna switch over to uniform so that I don't distort the size of my, or the shape of my leaf. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and move it around. And if I grab the handle there at the top, I can change the tilt. Um, and see if I like that better. But no, I think I like the original tilt. So I'm fairly happy with that. I'm gonna tap out of there and go back into my layers panel. I'm gonna tap on the left side of my text layer and then select edit text. That brings me back into the text interface. And so I'm gonna tap the little letters there to bring up this box. And I'm gonna change the size here. I'm going to scroll down under style and I'm going to select bold, I think. And then I'm going to tap done in the right side corner there and then tap into my move tool. And I'm going to lower the text box just a little bit so that I like how it's positioned on the page. Now I'm going back into my color picker and I'm gonna pick this color brown. I already have one down in my palette. If you don't, you can find a similar color by changing the reticule on your outer ring and then in your inner ring as well. 
Then with your text layer selected, tap on the color. Um, sometimes I have to do this a couple of times to make sure that I have the active color, but you should see your text change to the color you just selected. So now I'm back in my layers panel. I'm gonna slide that text layer to the left and I'm gonna select duplicate. So I make a second duplicate layer of this text. Now with the top text layer selected, go back into your color picker and you're gonna select um, uh, one of the previous greens that you had. Go back into your layer panel and now the top color of your text should look green. I'm gonna select the second, the bottom layer of the text layers and I'm going to go into my adjustments panel and I'm going to select Gaussian Blur. Now you notice I get a red bar up at the top telling me that the text has been rasterized. That's just fine. I'm going to slide my pencil over to the right and you can see that there's um, a bar at the top of my screen telling me what percentage I have my Gaussian Blur set at. You want it to about 6 to 9%. Tap out of the Adjustments panel and I'm going to go back over to my Layers panel. And I'm going to make sure that I have that bottom text layer selected. You notice that it no longer has an A in the thumbnail. I'm going to go to my Move panel and I'm going to slide that text box down into the right just a little bit so I get a nice drop shadow underneath the green text. Now I'm going to tap out of my Move tool and go back into my Layers panel. And I'm going to select both layer 2 and layer 3 again by selecting one and then sliding the other over to the right so that they're both highlighted. Go back into my Move tool and I'm going to change the size of my leaf just a little bit. Center it. You see the yellow line pops up when I have it centered, um, the yellow guideline. If yours doesn't, um, then check to make sure that the snapping option is checked in your Move tool panel on the left side there. So I pinched to um, zoom out a little bit so that I could get a better view of the entire um, canvas. And I'm just sizing and moving, resizing and moving the leaf so that I'm happy with how it's set up. Now I'm gonna select both text layers again. Same thing, I select one and then I slide the other one over to the right a little bit and I'm using my Move tool to resize and change the position of the text as well. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna tap out of my Move tool I'm checking to see what brush I'm on. I'm going to go into my brush library and I'm going to go back to inking and the studio pen. Now I'm looking at the size that I have it. I'm going to put it at about 60% full opacity. I'm in my layers panel and I'm going to go between layer 1 and layer 2 and add a layer. Now I'm going to hold my finger down on the background of the canvas to select that color. And then go into my color picker and I'm just going to slide my inner reticule down just a little bit so I get a darker version of that same color. I'm going to tap out of my color picker and from here I'm just going to draw a line straight down the left side of my canvas. Don't worry about whether or not it looks perfect. When you get to the end, don't pick up your pencil. You're gonna hold it there in place and your line will snap straight. Then you tap on the editing option at the top of center of your screen there and you'll get two little handles on either end of your line to help you adjust it so that it is lined up perfectly on the edge of your paper or your canvas. So once you're happy with that, tap out of the editing option and now we're going to do the bottom edge of the canvas. Same thing, hold your pencil down at the end and it'll snap into place. And now to the right side of the canvas, hold the pencil down, snaps in place. And you get that editing option there at the top if you need to make any adjustments to bring up the little handles on the either end of the line. And 
then finally the top edge. And now if you end up where it gives you these two options between line and polyline, just tap with two fingers to undo and redraw the line. Hold it down at the end, edit the line, and then tap out of the editing. And now you can just go in and fill in any of the corners that you might not have um, covered. So there is our finished drawing. So what might be fun is to be able to see a screen recording of everything that we've done to create this. So I'm gonna go into my wrench tool and I'm gonna select video and then time-lapse replay. And when I do that, you'll see the entire process um, that where it recorded your screen the whole way through everything that you've done. And there you have it.